Okay, so we're going to start this tutorial off by really what this tutorial is meant to do is to show you how to take something that you've made, say, with spline tools, and then make it editable. Um, and in this case, we're actually going to join this handle to this cup vessel. And so I made the handle with a sweep, and I made the cup with a lathe. Now, uh, something that you need to keep in mind, and this file should be available for those of you watching from uh, in class, if you're just some random person on the internet, uh, you could probably quickly uh, lathe out a cup and uh, sweep out a handle of your own. Um, so something to note uh, with the way that these polygons are drawn, right? I haven't made these editable yet. Um, we'll do that in a bit. But it's something about the way that um, splines work. And so uh, if I click on the spline for the lathe, and I turn the lathe off for a little bit, um, so I can just see that spline, and I zoom in a touch, um, you'll see that I have one, two, three, four, five, a total of six points. And uh, in order for these curves to happen between the points, what Cinema 4D does is it creates what are called intermediary points. And by default, um, and for a lot of splines that are done in Cinema 4D, um, it uses a mode called adaptive. And where you find that is under the um, object uh, properties in the attributes manager. And if I go down here, you'll see that um, it says intermediate points adaptive, and then it has this angle that's five degrees. What that means is if there is more than a five degree change um, over a certain distance, um, Cinema 4D is going to put a point where that, basically where that five degree change happens, and then where the next five degree change happens, and so on and so forth, which, which means that on long straight sections like this, there are um, no subdivisions that are made along the spline, but when you have a curve like the inside of the cup, you'll have fewer subdivisions up here, and then it subdivides, 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 and then spaces out again. Uh, and the same goes on this. You can actually, in the handle, you can see this happening because, right, we've got these longer, um, uh, between these vertical lines here, we've got a little bit more space. And then as the angle tightens, they get closer and closer together. And you can see them spread out there a bit more, tighter, spread, tighter, and then etc. And so um, this is something to, uh, to note that you know, it works well for, for rendering these things and using the least number of polygons. Um, but if you are trying to, uh, if, you're, you're, if you know you're gonna make this editable and you know that you, um, you're going to turn it into a polygon object, it's a lot easier to work with if you have um, a few more subdivisions and they're even in, space, in size. And so um, if I, uh, just to, um, show you how you could like what happens if you adjust this before we make some other changes in which type of intermediate points we have. You can see in this right there's all of these edges close together here and then they spread out. If I change this angle to 10, right, I'm not going to have quite the same like curve resolution in the object, uh, but I, you'll also see I have a lot fewer of these. If I make this like say 15, I'm going to have some pretty chunkiness happening here, but again it's going to eliminate um, some of that detail I had on there. So intermediate, intermediate points adaptive, you know, if I did one degree, right, I'm going to get really smooth, beautiful curves, um, but a lot more subdivisions in the process. So it really depends on what you're doing and what your intention is for the object. If your intention is to go on and continue modeling it um, as an editable mesh, then it's better to use one of these other options. There's we should just go through all of them. None is going to give you really, it basically turns all your splines into um, those points into hard corners um, and you eliminate everything else. Natural um, is a little bit more even, but what it does is anywhere where it needs more detail, it creates thicker subdivisions, right? It's really smoothed out the interior. It's evenly spread on these surfaces, but on the top, and then if I was to rotate the view, right here on the bottom because there's some some pretty substantial changes there it gets a little bit tighter right and i want you to notice what happens to this top edge as i use these different um, options right so this is natural and you can just say how many subdivisions between each point you want and then it stretches them or, or compresses them down so 
Um, if I say, so that's why this is so much thicker, because I have a point here and here, and so it smushed eight in there. So if I was to say, oh, well, I only want one in between, right, then I get a much simpler object that has um, a couple polygons on top, and it's really clean and simple on the inside, and these huge polygons on the side, right? Next is uniform. Uniform, um, and it kept this number one, uh, uniform just says, no matter what, we're gonna uh, make these all the same size. And so what happens is sometimes um, when you do that, it will, it will really be different from the original shape, right? And if I wanted a really fine edged cup, this would actually probably work fine. Um, and by default, this is usually set to eight as well, right? And so you get something that looks like this um, by default where you have this nice, these nice subdivisions. They're a little bit small for what we're gonna want to do, uh, but right, you get nice even subdivisions across. So now if I go to four, right, that's a little bit better. Oops, I did not mean to do whatever I just did. Um, if I go to four, that's actually pretty nice. The size is pretty good. And what I'm looking for really is that I want to, I'm going to have to delete one of these polygons and join this object where those hole, where this hole and say a hole here would be. So, um, so the problem is that, uh, you know, with this is that I'm still getting this weird edge thing. And so sometimes if you just go up or down one number, if you have, a strange edge problem, like if I go down to three, right, then I get, I actually kind of like the shape of the, the bevel on the bottom here, um, because it makes it look more cup-like than what I had actually originally drawn. Um, and, and then I have this bevel on the edge here too, right? So three is a possibility. If I go to five, right, five gives me, it's still a little sloped, but it's a much flatter surface here. Um, and I can always do a loop selection after this is edible and bring that down and make it level if I wanted to. Um, and so five seems like it might be a good fit. Um, the, you know, the hole I'm going to be making, my, the handle's a little bit thicker than that, but it, since I'm still in the editing mode or still in spine mode, I can actually make my handle a little smaller to fit that. Uh, so I think that's probably what I'm going to do. The other thing are the, the width of these subdivisions. I might want that width to be a, just a, a hair narrower. And so to uh, fix that, so what I need to do is I need to select my lathe object. And on my lathe object, I can adjust these r rotational subdivisions here. That's where this 32 is. So if I just made this like 28, um, oh, sorry. If I made this like the other direction, 34, uh, then it's gonna narrow these, right? If I make it 36, right? it'll make it a bit more square. And I want it to be, you know, somewhat square. What I would probably do is test this. And if it looks really wonky, then I would make these a little bit smaller. Uh, like I would add a couple more, like maybe we could go to 38. Um, and that's probably good. So now what I'm gonna do is, I know this is gonna be too big. So I need to make the diameter of the circle smaller on my handle. Um, however, I know from previous experience, what we really want to do is we want to simplify this mesh. And so if I go down here to intermediary points and it says eight and it's uniform, uh, that's the way a circle, that's the default for a circle. If I change this to none, then I'm going to get four points, right? And it's it, right, it makes a square. Now the issue with this square is that the top point, the angle is up top, right? Where, and so what happens when I go to join this is I get this kind of twist because I have to go from say this point to this corner and this point to this kind of corner. So it twists that whole mesh and I don't want that to happen. And there's not an easy way to rotate this circle, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so, I mean, I can reverse the points. That doesn't really help me any. <laughs> if I go into one of these other things, I'm in trouble. Uh, and, you know, you'd think you'd be able to select the circle, uncheck the sweep, um, and maybe uncheck the lathe so I can actually see the circle, right? You'd think that I would be able to select that circle, hit rotate, and if I turn my sweep back on now, and then uh, rotate this thing and actually have it move, but unfortunately, right, these rotations don't do anything, right? It, it, the sweep just ignores it. And so, um, 
So what we're going to do is we're going to swap the circle out with a square. With a square. So I'm going to go up to my spline tool, or a rectangle, I guess is what they call it. I'm going to make a rectangle instead. Um, I don't remember what the circles, the radius was 5. So I want the width and height to be 10 and 10. And then I'm just going to go ahead and pull the circle out of the sweep and drop this uh, rectangle in. All right. So now my rectangle is 10 by 10. It's square. And you'll be like, well, but how are you going to smooth all of this? Um, we're going to use something called a subdivision surface, which allows us to um, round all the geometry after we model the basic geometry. We could also go in in polygon mode and add more polygons and then and round that way too if we wanted to have finer control. Uh, okay, so I've got that set. So the other thing with a sweep, we don't have any way to control subdivisions on the sweep itself. What we have to do is the spline sets these, these uh, subdivisions in this direction. And so what we need to do is we select that spline. We're on the object tab. You'll see currently it's set to adaptive. I'm going to change that to uniform. And then instead of eight, let's try four to start with. And that seems like it's pretty good, but I'm going to turn the lathe back on so I can kind of see if these are about the right size. And they're, they're pretty close. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is maybe make the rectangle a little bit smaller. I'm probably going to just say 7.5 by 7.5 centimeters. And granted, this is like the, you know, a really large cup if it's got a seven and a half centimeter wide handle. Um, right. But so now this is a much narrower, um, thing, but it should fit more naturally into one of these polygons. Okay. So we've got, we've got these two things done. This is a good time to save our file. And we can just delete the circle. We don't need it anymore. So now we need to make these two objects editable. But before we do that, there's one last thing we need to do. We, you'll notice that there are caps on the end of this sweep. Now, there's, we could either come up to our sweep, go to caps, and just turn off the caps. Or, because this is kind of hanging a little bit further away from the object than I would like, what I could also do is when I go to make these editable, I can use the extrude tool if there's this face here, pull it out a little bit, and then just select that polygon face and delete it um, when I get it to the place where I want it to be. And that's actually what I want to do because it's the extrude um, will work really nicely, especially at the bottom here to pull this in. And finally, um, we could either do this now or um, after we've made these editable, but you'll see that as it stands, this subdivision, this edge is hitting the edge of the coffee handle. And we want the coffee handle to be even with either, it doesn't matter if it's this one or this one, but we want it to be even there. So I'm going to go ahead and change my view. I'm going to hit the letter H to get as close to these objects as possible. And I'm going to select my sweep. I'm going to use my rotate tool, which I already have selected. And I'm just going to rotate this handle just a hair until it more or less lines up with one of these pie slices here. And that means that it will, it'll be lined up when I'm, when I'm ready to go. Okay. So how do we make a spline object edible? We do the same, we can do it exactly the same way that we would have made a um, primitive edible. And that's either to click on the button up here in the far top left, or hit the letter C on the keyboard, or right click on the name, and choose make editable, right? Any one of those works. And when we do that, you'll see we get all of these like polygon selections. We're not going to worry about th what those tags mean right now. Um, we'll cover that later in another tutorial. And then for the lathe object, we do exactly the same thing, right? We hit the letter C and we've made it editable. But now, so now we have these two meshes, but they are separate objects and they will not connect to each other. We can, Cinema 4D is sneaky. It will let you um, create polygons to this object, but it will not glue them to that object unless we make them a single object. And so the way that you uh, make, you join two separate meshes into one is we select both objects and we right click, and then we go down to connect objects and delete. Or we could, conversely, we could just go to connect objects. And connect objects means that essentially you still have a, a you, it makes a new copy of the connected object and leaves your other two objects alone. Um, just to keep things clean, I'm going to do connect objects and delete. And so now this is one mesh, right? We can edit it all together um, and 
actually glue them together correctly and all of that. The other way that you can find that thing rather than right clicking on it is there's this object menu here and um, right it's grayed out because we've already done it but right make editable connect objects and delete and everything else right there. Okay so next let's go ahead and extrude the handle so it's a little bit closer to the uh, cup. So I'm going to go ahead and go into polygons mode. I'm going to use my live selection tool. I'm going to select one end of this. It doesn't matter if you start with the top or the bottom. And I'm going to use the extrude. And I'm going to click drag and just pull this out a bit so it's a little bit closer. I still want some space there because I want a way for this to like, like a, I want a way for this to, you know, kind of spread as it goes and connect to that and give me a little bit more room to work with. So I'm going to go down to the other end now. I'm going to hit the letter D. And, um, oh, sorry, I'm going to hit the, the space bar, select that polygon, hit the letter D, and then off in space somewhere, I'm going to click and drag to pull this out. Now, when you do these extrusions, you should probably, it's nice to keep them about the same resolution as the other segments that are on your object. So I'm going to go ahead and let go there. And, um, you know, with this one, I could potentially do one more, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it the way it is. Um, and there's one final thing that we need to do. I know from experience that if I, um, you know, this this handle is kind of in the middle of these two uh, polygon areas here. Um, and so I have to make a choice on which one that I connect to. And what I'd really like to do is actually kind of shift these edges up a little bit so that um, I have a little bit of space above where the handle connects. Um, to work with uh, so that it doesn't connect right to the top edge because that looks strange. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down um, and use my loop selection. If you are not in the model layout, remember you can go up to the top right and go to model um, under layouts to switch to the view that I'm currently in. So down here at the bottom, um, I am going to use the loop selection tool and I'm in polygons mode, but so I want to switch to edges mode. And I'm going to select this edge. I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to select this edge. And then I want to use the slide tool that's down at the bottom. And to do that, right, I can either click on that button or I can hit M and then O to use the slide tool. And right, the slide tool allows me to slide things along um, the other uh, edges, right? And so I'm going to click on these and, oh, that's not what I thought it was going to happen. Interesting. I've never, apparently I've never selected two at once. That's interesting that I can drag them together uh, or drag them apart. Um, so what I really want to do is undo that. I want to select one of them. Um, so I'm just going to select this top one and then I'm going to hit M and O. And I'm going to pull this up until it's like just above where the handle would hit. Then I'm going to hit the space bar, which gets me back to my loop select. I'm going to select this, I'm going to hit I, and now I could just hit the space bar to jump back to the slide tool. And I'm just going to pull this one up a hair. All right, so this right, allows me to, you know, now these polygons are a little bit bigger than these other ones, but it's not a huge issue. Um, it's more important that I'm not hitting right in the middle of an intersection there, because that would look weird or create a lot more work. Okay, so now that I've done that, let's go ahead and go back to polygons mode, and let's delete the polygons that we want to remove. So. I'm going to use my live selection tool, which means I need to go up to the top and click on that. I'm going to rotate my view uh, and make sure that I'm deleting the right one here. So I'm going to delete, I'm going to select that polygon, delete it, which right creates a hole in that mesh. I'm going to come over here, just select this edge one, delete that. And then I'm going to scroll down here, delete this end and then rotate my view again so that I can make sure I'm lined up right and delete this one. Now um, something else that it looks like this might be you know these this might be a little narrow and it's still a little high so maybe what I want to do is I want to go to edges and loop selection and then just pull this up just a hair um, so that it fits better. And so to do that, right, I'm going to use the slide tool again. So I'm going to hit M and O and click up. Oh, I don't want to do that. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to undo the deletion of that polygon. 
Then I'm going to use my loop selection tool. I'm going to hit the letter uh, M and then O. And now I should be able to slide this up, right? So the issue was that because I had this hole there, it was, it was, uh, it freaked out. It didn't know what to do. But <laughs> that's the simplest way to describe what just happened. Uh, it was trying to do what it was supposed to do, but what I wanted it to do and what it thought it was supposed to do um, algorithmically were two different things. So I'm going to go back to polygons mode. This polygon's already selected, so I'm going to delete it. Um, I'm going to grab my live selection tool. I'm going to rotate my view. And I already deselected that one, or I already deleted that one, so great. Okay, so now there are two primary ways that we can connect uh, these geometries to one another. And I'm going to show you the fast way first that works most of the time, and then I'm going to show you the slower way that um, we'll, we'll talk about why, why the fast way only works some of the time. So the fast way is to use the stitch and sew tool. And to do that, we need to be in edges mode. And what we need to create a loop selection of the edges that we want to join. So I'm going to go to loop selection. I'm going to hover over, select the outside of this hole. I'm going to pull, rotate my view. I'm going to hold down shift, select the outside of this. i rotate my view again so I can see both of them. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on the stitch and sew tool. And then I'm going to hover over one of these corners. Um, it doesn't really matter which vertice, but I'm going to start here. The big thing is, if you see what it's done now, it's it's snapping it to this corner, which means this whole there's going to be a twist as the top surface is going to rotate around to the side, and the side surface is going to rotate. This side is going to be on the top. So what you want to do is you just want to make sure that you um, have it going to the point that makes the most sense, right? This point is going straight. That means it's going to make a straight connection. So once I get this point where I want it, I let go, and it bridges those two pieces of geometry. Now I might want to make a loop cut here, so that that where it gets where it kind of fattens out, I can make that happen a little um, less uh, less gradually, right? So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to hit the letter K to select the cutting tools and the letter L to do a loop cut. And what I want to do is I want to put this pretty close to this other, uh, this other seam um, because I want the handle to remain pretty much the same size. And, and I'm just going to put this here and then I'm going to move it uh, down, down the handle. So I'm going to click here. And then I have two things selected. So I'm going to hit the space bar to do loop selection. Click over here so that's deselected. And click here to make sure that is selected. And then I'm going to hit the letter E to move it. And I just want to make sure it is going to move in about the right direction. Yeah. And so you can see it's kind of off a little bit. Um, and maybe if I did like world coordinates, no, it doesn't care. Um, but I just want to make, you know, if I, if it's off a little bit, oh, off a little bit that way now, All right? I just want to make sure that I get it reasonably close. Um, okay. So that's that one. That's the fast way. Now, the way that takes more time is to use what's called the bridge tool. And the bridge tool is this tool that looks like a bridge down here. And what the bridge tool does is it allows you to um, basically say, hey, I want this point connected to this point um, to create an edge. And then what you have to do is the tool is still open at that point. And you go down and you say, okay, I'm going to use I'm going to create an edge from here to here. Please fill in that gap. So you click drag from one point to the other, and then you come down and you click drag from one point to the other. And when I let go of that, um, it's created a new polygon. And if I've done this in the correct order, that polygon, when I select it, so I'm going to go to polygon view, and it's already selected because that's sort of the default option. Um, when I've already selected it, it's highlighted in orange. If I rotate my view right now, I want you to see that the inside of that polygon is highlighted in blue. Occasionally when you're using this tool, what happens is that you get a polygon that highlights in blue on the other side. And I'm going to try and make that happen. 
And if I can't, <laughs> then we'll just talk about it in theory. But what that is, is this is the outside face of the polygon and the blue side is the inside face. And for certain materials, this makes a really big difference in how they appear. Um, if you have a mix of the outside faces and inside faces of your polygons on a surface and you're using transparency, things go totally haywire because uh, it doesn't know um, how to process that information. So, um, so to continue what I've done, I'm going to go back to points mode. I'm going to click drag to this point and then I'm going to come over to this edge, click drag and make sure I'm on the right point to that point. And then <clears throat> with this next one, I'm going to uh, click drag. I've been going from here to here, I think. I'm going to go ahead and click drag this way and see if that, that looks like it is the right orientation. There's usually a hint. It'll look like if you can see inside here and there's this weird banding on here. Um, that's the hint that something is wrong if you see that banding on the outside of an object. If you do see that banding on the outside of an object, since I don't seem to be making it happen, maybe at the bottom, I can make magic happen, but we'll see. So I'm just going to click drag this other one. Okay, no, I did not make magic happen. So I'm going to manufacture a problem so that I can show you how to solve it. So if I go back to polygons mode, oh, great, it actually did it them inverted. Fantastic, right? So you see I have all these polygons set. One of them is orange, the other three are blue, right? And so the problem is that these are inside out. Um, and so I don't need to have this one selected, but what I need to do is I need to use my live selection tool and I need to deselect everything. And then I need to select these three polygons that are blue. Once I have those three polygons that are blue selected, what I can do is I go up to my mesh. I go up to the, to go down to the normals um, option and I go down to reverse normals. Align normals, what that does is say you have a smattering of these blue polygons on your mesh. Um, as long as there are more orange polygons on your mesh, it will, when you click align normals, they will all become orange. If the majority of them are blue, they will all become blue, and then you can come in and do reverse normals to make them orange. And so I'm going to go ahead and click align normals and hit OK. Oh, sorry. I hit the wrong thing. Not align normals. <laughs> I want to go to, okay, so I'm going to go down to normals. I'm going to click on reverse normals. And then I just have to hit OK. And those normals will be reversed. And then I should just select these other polygons and make sure they're orange too, which they are. And now this geometry is correct. Okay. So now I've got this chunky, really, <laughs> odd shaped mug um, with a handle that stretches out too far and you know there's been problems with it but the whole goal is to show you clearly um, how to make this happen. So now that I've got this all set the way that I can round all of this geometry is by using something called a subdivision surface. So if I select the subdivision surface and I make this sweep a child of the subdivision surface suddenly everything is rounded and smooth. Right. And so I've got this nice rounded lip on the cup. Um, if I zoom out, that bottom edge is nice and rounded. And so even though I've been modeling with really limited uh, polygons, um, the subdivision surface allows me to create something to smooth all of those hard points. And there's a tool called the subdivision um, weight tool, which we're going to look at right now as well, because I want to just kind of show you these, these couple of things that we can do. So. This is all totally rounded. If I uncheck this, right, it gets square again. And this is probably the easiest way to um, set this up. So let's say that I want everything to be rounded, but I really want this hard, crisp edge on the top of my mug. And so what I need to do is I need to go and select um, either edges or polygons. Both of these modes will um, work. I'm going to start with edges mode and we'll see what it looks like. Points mode, when you're using a poly, uh, uh, subdivision surface weight tool, do crazy things <laughs> when you adjust them. So edges or polygons tend to be the best option. So I'm going to select the edges. I'm going to go to edges. I'm going to go to loop selection. And I'm going to go ahead and select one of these edges for now just to as an example. So I've selected this one edge. 
I'm going to go into my full view and turn my subdivision surface back on. And I'm going to click on this polygon, this weight subdivision surface tool. So I'm going to click on this. And then anywhere in space, I'm going to click drag. And as I drag to the left, it gets rounder. As I drag to the right, it gets harder. And so now I have had the ability to control um, the intensity of the uh, subdivision surface, right? So there's no weighting happening here. And this is really weighted on the inside. If I want to go ahead and do another selection, you can see that these polygons are still here. So um, I can go back to loop selection and, you know, it's a little bit harder to see where these edges are. Like you'd think it's up here, but it's actually down a touch. So if I select this interior edge and then go back to my subdivision surface uh, weight tool, I can, right, if I want that to be a little less rounded, um, I can go ahead and make that, right, a little less rounded. Um, if I want, uh, you know, a little bit more, you know, squareness to the um, handle here, I might be able to use the loop selection tool to select these, but you'll notice there's areas where I'm going to have to delete part of that selection. So if I was to say, oh, I really want this top edge for some reason, and maybe this is an object I'm actually modeling, not something that's coming out of. Um, I really want to, you know, be able to uh, make those a little bit more um, uh, hard. Um, but I have all this additional selection. So, right, in the past, what, the way we've essentially, we've gotten around this is to go up to our select menu, go down to our rectangle, or we could try the lasso or polygon selection tool. Um, I'm going to use the rectangle. I'm going to hold down control and maybe go to a different view because it's going to be a lot easier to deselect anything I don't want in this side view, so in the front view. So I'm going to hold down control, click, drag, and get rid of most of that selection. And then you'll see I still have a few leftovers. So at this point, um, it's probably best to go ahead and use the live selection tool um, and just hold down control, click and drag to deselect some of these additional areas where I don't want that, um, where I don't want the weight to change. And rotate the view here. Okay, so I've got these two edges selected. So now I'm going to go ahead and go to my subdivision weighting and click and drag and right, I could make this really, really hard on the outside if I wanted to, um, but still maintain that curvature on the inside. Um, or I could pull this weight uh, back in a little bit so it's got a little bit of curvature, um, but it's not as strong as the underside. Okay, so that's a little addendum to the modeling tutorials to show you how to um, take spline objects, merge them, you make them edible, turn them into polygon objects, and then take a very simple mesh and use the subdivision surface to add a lot of geometry to it. Um, one final thing about the subdivision surface, and we haven't really talked about rendering yet, um, but in the subdivision surface, there's these two settings under the object settings. And these different types um, will subtly or, you know, potentially massively impact the way that this mesh is drawn. So if I, you can go through these different options. There's no real difference there. Um, you can see subtle changes based on which one of these I choose. Um, this, right, creates this um, open subdivision loop, turns everything into triangles. Um, and this bilinear um, does some really strange things too, right? It, it, it ignores basically everything, but it makes, it gives you more polygons on the surface. Um, I'm going to leave it at the default for now. Um, and then there's a subdivision editor and subdivision renderer. What that means is that you, um, that it's giving you in the editor, it gives you two more levels of subdivisions of polygons than what you actually have. And in the renderer, it gives you two, it's also giving you two more, um, levels, but you can, what you can do is you know, the editor, you don't necessarily need to see the super, super fine detail. But when you go to render it, 
you might want to increase that to 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 get even finer detail or finer smoothing happening on the surface and so if something's say highly reflective and polished looking the the fewer like hard edges that these polygons make the better and so um, you could set this to three or four one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to have your subdivision in the editor higher than the subdivisions in the renderer that can cause instability um, and crashes so be careful of that they may have fixed it but that's that used to be the the advice um, and so i figure you know why not continue spreading that even if it's false information um, you could also look at this subdivide uvs thing but we're not too worried about that yet because we're not doing materials okay so i'm going to save this and that's the end of that tutorial.